Hello. I am live with uh, in my studio. My name is Lisa Merzen, and I'm really looking forward to uh, sharing a little bit about me. Now, I've just looked at the time. I'm a minute early. And in the meantime, I'm not sure if you can hear the music in the background, but uh, let me introduce you to Jesse Cook. And Jesse Cook is uh, a Canadian artist. And I came across Jesse Cook listening to the Weather Channel years ago, probably 20 years ago. And I love the music so much. And I found him by calling the Weather Channel. And yeah, so check him out, Jesse Cook. So let's get started because. little thing all my gear I have shelving down here that I keep all my gear on and if I go the other way I've got a huge bookshelf music art books that I consult regularly in fact I'll just go there sometimes and get be inspired and look at other people's work okay so pictorialist photography if you know any of the history of photography um, pictorialist started around well around the So this is one of my favorite books called Truth and Beauty. And I chose some pictures and you know, it was really cool for me to see when I was choosing images that I want to share with you. I was really, I was realizing how much my work is influenced by this, um, by this uh, pictorialism. So here's one. Okay, let me see, just make sure I can get the right angle. One of the things that happens a lot too is there there's a dreamlike quality quality to this type of photography. Nice little image on the back to give you another feel for that. So it was it was realism that has a bit of a dream quality to it. I guess the At that what an incredible portrait can you see all the grain and the, the the texture that's that's to the image so it's you know when we look at our dim, digital images today things are so sharp and they have a real well for me based on you know my experience as well from the past with working with film um this type of imagery again i'm talking i keep using that word dreamlike and ethereal it keeps coming up okay a couple other things so project this is this is what I am aspiring to but again you can see that same the texture there's a there's a contrast this is using as the name is gum oil printing um, you're actually using uh, gum or oil pigments into an image that's been burned into paper and with like an oil dabber the images start emerging
gum bichromate and platinum prints. And um, I really always loved the darkroom. When digital came about, of course, for my business, I started, I, you know, grabbed the digital camera and I love digital photography. Don't get me wrong. But there was always something about being in the darkroom. I love the darkroom. It's just really, really cool. And um, so the stuff you're going to see is darkroom work. So I'm going to pick up my phone. I'm going to take you for a little tour about. All right. Now, let's see. Can I move the camera around? All right. Here we go. Okay. So this is one. This actually, this picture I took in Bob's course. And it is called Donkey. <laughs> but you will recognize the similar quality to the images I was just showing you. So this is a technique called lift printing. And I'm incorporating digital technology with analog photography. So for those who don't know, analog is old school. That's using film. And you will notice, you can see all things that looks very grainy, high contrast image. And this has to do with the chemistry I'm using. And I'll tell you about that in a second. Okay, another series called Abandoned. Again, high contrast. You'll see again grains coming into certain places if you look closely. And this is a recent piece, which is a compilation. So again, it's digital, a digital negative um, that I've printed in the darkroom. And then I've hand colored the photographs. So these are silver gelatin images that I hand color and then I scan them and then I create this compilation. And this is something I, I'm, it's, it's new, a new piece in the series. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited about it. So I want to kind of, I'm going to go a little bit through the process. I'm going to take you into my dark room and I'm going to turn you back around so you can see me as I'm walking. And hopefully Jesse Cook music is loud enough in the background to, to accompany us. So, um, you know, the other thing I want to tell you, because like, since I'm, I got this opportunity is I've been asked sometimes to give advice. So, you know, as an artist, what, what advice would you give somebody just starting out? And that, I mean, it's, it's somewhat of a hard question because there's so many layers to becoming an artist and what compels you to the, to a medium more so than another. And, you know, my advice for me, what I always find is you always just keep going, no matter what it is. You keep going, you you don't stop. And there will be times when you think, oh my God, why am I doing this? What? Why in the world would I be spending all this money, all this time to create art that I love? The be an artwork becomes babies, doesn't matter who it is. So for an artist to sell the work is a great thing, but it's like, oh my God, take care of my artwork, it's my baby. So, okay, let's show my dark room. I'll turn around. Okay, so this is where the magic happens. And I've had my dark room for since about 2000. You can see all the chemistry. And for those who don't know, I'll just point it out. So those right there, those are developing tanks. Those are the reels. Those will go inside the developing tanks. That's for short film. And see this box here? It says LD20. Unfortunately, like many things in the photography world, it is no longer being produced. Um, there is another uh, company who makes a lift developer. So what's special about lift? And not to get into too technical with you. Let me switch around again. Lift is a chemistry that is affected by temperature. And it is affected by how, uh, how many prints have been developed in it. And the really cool thing with this this chemistry is that over a period of time, the chemistry changes. So the more prints I print in this developer, and we're talking about silver prints, so like analog prints. Um, what can I give you? I don't have one right here. Sorry. And um, you can get color changes. So a print that has a lot of black and whites at the beginning later might pick up some brown tones. So I can develop the same picture 10 times, so 10 pieces of paper in the developer. By the 10th image, 
there might be some brown tones coming up and you might have contrast shifts. So each print is unique, which I love as well. And um, yeah, it's just, it's a really cool chemistry. The only thing is you have to have a lot of patience because a print, the a print after, after a period of time, you could be in this developer moving this print around for 20 minutes, but very cool. Okay, now let me show you my enlarger. So when I was talking about a digital negative, here you go. Let's see. Move this down. This is a digital negative. It's a special material uh, substrate that you can buy for inkjet prints. And uh, it's a digital image. I've taken it into Photoshop. I invert it to create a negative. So pretend, sorry, pretend that's my piece of paper. My This is a silver gelatin piece of paper, okay? We are in a dark room. It's not an inkjet piece of paper. This, this would be, for example, a silver gelatin piece of paper. So I'm like this. I put a piece of glass on top. This is called contact printing, and it's called contact printing because the size of, the, of your, your negative is going to be the final size of the image. Okay? And then I would, obviously, I would turn on the switch. A light, light comes down. It goes through here and it burns the image onto the paper and then it goes into developer and then there's other stuff after that. Pretty cool, eh? All right, let's bring you back. Now, I'm not sure how I can, okay, I want to light off in here. I wanted to show you, oh yeah, let me see. I can show you just that blank. So this is it. That's the substrate blank, if that helps you at all. There are people in the city doing this. I would highly recommend doing um, some investigation if you want to get into historical printing or like alternative printing, which is making a comeback. Uh, very exciting for photographers. And if you have a chance, Dylan Ellis Gallery, where Bob Carney is running his um, uh, lab out of, and he has a full darkroom. You can check out, you can see some of the work he's doing. And a lot of people... There's a, oh, I came across a website recently, I introduced it, called CETES, S-E-I-T-I-E-S -E -E dot C-A. They're out of, um, I think they're based in Calgary, uh, definitely in Alberta, but you can check them out as well. All old processes, really beautiful stuff. Okay, now I want to put on pair of gloves because I want to show you some other cool things. Oh, let me do this. All right. Okay, I'm going to have a hard time putting my glove on. Just a sec here. And, okay, you are looking at um, one of the series I showed you before. Just to, and I had, okay, I'm going to do this. Not the way I'm supposed to, but. So you, you really want to wear gloves when you do this because your fingerprints can affect the prints. Okay, can you see the, the difference between these two? You'll notice in the whites, they're different. The image on the left has more contrast. So, this is exactly what I was talking about, the cool thing about lith chemistries. Here's two prints exposed, exactly the same. The longer they've been, been in the, the developer, or I should say, the longer the developer has been used, you can get two different effects. So, pretty cool, eh? All right. So, next part. Let me give you a little quick demonstration of the new stuff I've been doing. And you will see my paints. So you will also notice that I have a lot of stuff everywhere. A true, a true artist studio where we just let our creativity do its thing. And it also means sometimes I can't find things and I buy the same color of paint again. All right, let's bring this over. So you notice this is one of the images in the... Uh, large photo I, I showed you recently and my cotton balls are stuck to my paper so I'm not I'm just going to do a, a quick little demonstration or not a demo I won't do a demo I'm just going to show you basically what I do all right so I take this low toxicity mineral spirits that's important because you know how much that stuff smells and with a cotton ball I will go over the image and then the image will 
that'll seep in a little bit and it kind of prepares the uh, paper for the oil paints. Here is my palette. I'll usually dribble like some mineral spirits into here and I'm using little swabs like this. So I would dip it into the oil paint. I come in, I do something like this and then I will take cotton and I will just do things like this. And layering up the paints, it's hard to tell, but I have also, I mean, there's other colors in here as well. You'll see the brown tones, yellows, different yellows. That's probably like a, I don't know, that might be a cadmium yellow. I really like the earth earth tones, like um, raw sienna and stuff like that. Uh, what's important is it has to dry. Um, it is oil paint. I use also, you'll notice that this paper doesn't have any shine to it. You have to use matte paper. This, and again, this is not inkjet paper. This is silver gelatin paper. So this is the old school darkroom stuff. Okay. And then after it's dried, I can't remember. I left it, probably left it for a week. And then I scanned it and I brought the two images and made the um, other image. So that'll take me to my next little thing. Let me tell you about when I was taking these pictures. And while we're doing that, I'm going to show you another image that came out of this same same series. And this was shown at Lonsdale Gallery. They had um, a show for contact. And again, you'll see I've taken a bunch of pictures of rocks. Same process, digital negative. Gone, went through the process of this where I painted each image. So, and these were all five by sevens. I painted each one of them and uh, brought it into a collage in Photoshop. And in this spot is a rock. Now, okay, this might sound a little hokey to you guys, but um, you know when you're in the zone, when you feel, whether you're painting, whatever you're doing, you're just there and everything kind of comes together and it feels very much like, it feels like a spiritual experience. And when I was taking these pictures, so these and this one included, and there's others as well that I'll, I'll be working on for this series, I was by myself walking on the beach and I was looking at these rocks and the more I looked at them and the more I spent time with them, I started to see this happening. I watched, I was enamored by, like if you look, look at that, look at how those rocks are set up there. And so I saw something more, more than just rocks that I saw these rocks coming together in, in a different pattern. It's almost like rocks are talking to each other. And then the little rock that's, that's going to go there. When I put this together, I looked at this rock and if you think you can, you know, sometimes you look at some, something and maybe something, there's an experience you have with it, or it's in your imagination, but it was like, this rock was saying to me, okay, this rock has to be part of the series. So a rock, an actual rock will go into this space. And, um, yeah. And sometimes, well, okay. Sometimes often that, that will be my experience when I'm in that zone. Often I'm by myself when this happens. Um, yeah. So yes, photography is definitely more than just, more than just picture taking for me. I'm going to turn you around so you can see me. Um, it really is a spiritual experience. And if, you know, there's two things that really are, that really come into play in my photography. And it, it speaks to who I am, um, my history as a person in this lifetime, and where I see it in the future, and what really has always had meaning to me. And that is a connection to, uh, I'll say land, but it's more than that. It's, I would say the earth, that, um, that everything on earth is important. And we are important. People are important. We all have a relationship to that. And that speaks to me a lot when I'm doing this work. Even in, in an abandoned place, I look at I look at the place as it was, what stories were told there. And we don't know them. It's like if I look at you or you look at me, we all have our own personal stories. And as an artist, we're we're part of those stories come out in our work. And um, yeah, so that abandoned place, I saw that too. It's like, well, it could be the rocks. It could be all these little pieces that have come together that are left over that people brought in and taken out and they become these new stories energetically. So that plays into it. So the connection to the earth and also a spirit, 
spiritual part. And I have a spiritual practice as well that that um, certainly influences my work and will be part of future projects. And, you know, you as an artist, you're always, you know, you can, oh my gosh, how many know, okay, if you're an artist out there, how many little notes have you written like on your phone or on a piece of paper and you tuck them away? Oh, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. Because they always come in and yeah, okay, then I've lost them. But I always very well, if you've written them down, maybe they'll show up again, right? Um, but that's the fun of it too. That's that's the fun thing about being an artist. And, I, and your job, we do have a job. We have a job to share that creativity and be a part of the world and share the, that experience with people. And everyone has... And, Everyone is an artist. We all have something to share, whether whether you write, whether you build something, whether you have a beautiful garden. I mean, those are all creative artistic practices. And my choice, my medium is photography. That's the um, that's the difference. One other things, other things that have influenced me. I, if you guys know Nielsen Park Creative Center, hmm, when was this? Uh, I guess in the early two thousands. I I decided. So I had um, my commercial business. There was a, something happens sometimes when you're doing your your work is also your creative stuff and the work was I was busy with work and somehow the creative part changed a little bit and so what I did is I started taking courses at Nielsen Park Creative Center in art so I did painting I did drawing and this is my second piece of advice for today if for a photographer if you take a drawing class like a doesn't matter beginners drawing class something happens to your sensibility with contrast and when I even now when I take a picture I sometimes see it as a drawing that I'm looking for the tones um the you know the highlights the shadows all obviously that's part of my nature as well but I start to look at my work differently so that was that was a cool thing and something you know yes or no if you're interested it's that something that you think would be uh beneficial and enjoy i would suggest doing that and nielsen park creative center is a great place to do stuff too and if you're in the west end if you're well if you can go to arts at you can go to nielsen park creative center that's cool too and um i think that's it i'm if there and i'm not sure if i can receive questions let's see if i went to comments nope but what I am going to do, okay, I'm going to send you my Instagram handle, if I can do that. Let's see. Uh, okay, now, as I'm doing this and trying to find my underscore, I was asked a couple of things about arts, community arts. And I may have answered that a little bit. Um, the, import, the importance of arts. I, I couldn't say enough of it. I think art, art is a way to, it's almost like, I'm trying to find the words to describe that. It's almost good, good for your soul, good for your brain, good for your, for your psychic, your emotionality. Um, it, it reminds people, it brings us into a common denominator. You know, why do we all go, okay, variations, but if you saw the Mona Lisa, well, whoa, what, what's cool? Like when I talk about the Mona Lisa, what does that, what does that remind you of? Where does that take you? And art does that. So whether it's graffiti, whether it's any kind of art, I'd, I highly encourage the arts. It's so important. And the other, okay, another question that was asked me, this isn't in the comments, by the way. Um, okay, what's my what's my favorite food? I love Caesar salad. Oh my god, a good Caesar salad. I, jeez, and why is that? Because my mom made has always made a mean Caesar salad. That's a good one for me. Okay, I am putting my handle into the comments, so please follow me, and I will follow you back. I'm on Instagram under. I have a couple handles under Instagram. Um, the one I'm posting right now is art photography and I have a business one. I have a couple others. Follow me there too and I'll follow you back and love to share. And um, yeah, if you have any comments, I'm just wondering how we can connect. Can I give you an email address on live? I'm not sure about that, but you know what? Um, somehow we will connect. Let's connect on Instagram and then we can continue the conversation there and keep in touch.
and I'd love to hear your comments or any questions. Happy to share. Um, yeah, cool. Okay. Have a good day. Bye.